reality than it's somebody else's creating your reality. And it's always your choice. Whatever you persistently think or believe will become your reality. Whatever you persistently think and believe will become your reality. All fears and insecurities are real to the creator and the tissues of the body will manifest them for you in your lifetime. <coughs> now this is very profound because when you look at African Americans, when you look at Africans in Africa, one of the most distinct out front emotions that they have is fear. And any time, I don't care what it is, you focus on an Im image or an event which fear makes you focus and become aware of it all the time. You must have the event. So therefore, there's an old cliche that says the only thing that you ever want to fear is fear. That you want to do everything you can possibly do never to ever be afraid of anything. And that is one of our greatest drawbacks. So you have to understand this was the time that we were to be great leaders, sovereign people on the planet, but because we have not understood psychologically, emotionally, and mentally what happened to us, we basically cannot move into that position. We keep walking around, running around, being rolled around, whatever the condition is, limping around in the same circle. And it has been for over a hundred years, literally in the wilderness of your own mind and beingness, because you have not taken the time to embrace and understand how you were created and the effects of what happened to you, how it has influenced your thinking so that you do not walk outside of the circle. <coughs> All thoughts within the mind are chemicals in the tissues of the body. So you have to understand that all your thoughts are chemicals in your bloodstream. All of your thoughts. These are not just kind of poofy, woo-woo things. When you think a thought, that brain is responsible for translating that into a chemical and actually flooding your bloodstream and your nerves with that chemistry so that the cells of your body know what you are thinking. So when we, in our own minds, play games about conjuring up feelings and thoughts and thinking that just because it appears as though we're not acting on them or because we haven't spoken on them, that the cells of your body don't know it. Thinking thoughts and then trying to neutralize what you have thought by not acting on it is extremely toxic to the cells of the body very toxic. This is one subtle reason why we have diseases that appear as though they have no solution. One of the most common ones is hypertension. Hypertension is clearly known that individuals who have this have long-standing unresolved emotional problems. And so how can a pill resolve an emotional problem? The only thing it can do is shut down part of the brain so that you have less chemistry made from those emotions that you conjured up that you have not addressed. So therefore you wonder why you still have the stroke, why you basically now are sick and poisoned from the medication, but it was always a band-aid from the beginning because the issue originated from a state of consciousness. Next please. So, now pay attention to this. A sensation, or sensations in the body are created by the cells of your body. It is the cell's method of relaying to the brain that it has received and responded to your thoughts. So when you have a thought and then you have a sensation in your body, it's just the cells saying, okay, we got it. That's all it is. Now you have to understand then that pain, for example, is a perception of a sensation as defined by your mind. Nothing more. The body doesn't know pain. The body doesn't know pain. 
We've seen too many times where people have had their legs cut off, had their half, head ha half off, and a whole bunch of other stuff, and you have to tell them, hey, did you know that your leg is hanging off? Or did you know that your head is hanging open? When they come into emergency room, they don't even know that. Because their attention was focused on other things. Is my child all right? What happened to my husband? If these are auto accidents or there's some major catastrophe. Do you understand me? So therefore, pain is something that you decide that you have. This is not what the body decides. This is your decision to decide that a sensation that you're having is painful. Because the sensation can be whatever it is that you ever want to call it. It doesn't have to be pain. Now that may be a big one for you to swallow because most of you are, are conditioned to not be able to separate mind from body from emotions and recognize that you're choosing all the time which one you want to allow to be real. Fear is the acceptance by the mind that it has exhausted its resources to cope with an experience. A simple and more explicit definition of fear is ignorance. Because when you have information, you are not in fear. Because the mind has alternatives. So that if plan A doesn't work, we can create a plan B. We can create a plan C, a plan C1, 2, 3, a plan D1, 2, 3, etc. So we don't have time to basically feel threatened because we have all of this data that we can go and create a different methodology. So when people are in fear, they are admitting that they basically do not have information to be able to create a new reality that they can take action on. So fear is an admission of ignorance. And that's fine, because when you're honest and you, the first thing you recognize that you're in a state of fear, then the first thing I am strongly suggesting that you do from this point on is to get information fast. And if you notice, here we are in the information age, we have space stations in outer space, we have colonies literally on the moon, colonies in, on Mars, and when a person says that they're having issues around figuring out how they're going to survive, etc., there's no way that they're going to really take a serious part in, in Why? Because we don't have information. So here we are with all these things going on around us, but yet and still we do not have a decent, completely computerized library in our communities. The one bookstore here that's been here indefinitely is about to close down. And to me, that is just incomprehensible. With all the science, mathematics books, astronomy books, etc., that the bookstore needs to have for us so we can go right to the corner and buy them, I can't imagine that a bookstore would not be one of the first preferences of something that we want to have in our community. So you have to look at yourself and ask why isn't going to the bookstore and building your library one of your main goals every month. And we're not talking about romance novels, okay, because they do not give you any data on how to deal with this. We're talking about hardcore data that you can make decisions with, whether it be in finance, home economics, cooking, whatever. But your books shelf should be loaded because if it is and you're reading them, then that means that you have a heavy mind with lots of information and one of the toxic substances that you will not be conjuring up in your blood will be no fear. Next. Can you just move it over? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So, emotions. Let's deal with that. Emotions are created by mentally connecting a thought to a sensation. Like I told you before, the body only knows sensations. If you don't label the sensation, then it does not become an emotion. It's just a sensation and it will pass through. There will be no further chemistry made. But every time you decide that this sensation, I'm going to call it this, then you immediately then cause the brain to flood your body with chemistry. And the more you continuously create this emotion, the more chemistry of that emotion you have in your tissues 
until your tissues begin to believe that this is part of its beingness, that it's supposed to have this chemistry. Now, as I said down here, that as the chemicals 